All right. Today we are going to talk about, are we in a real estate bubble? Are we in a real estate bubble? Did you know that the number one most Googled question regarding real estate right now is, are we in a housing bubble? So I want to take a moment right now and answer this for you so you can stop your Googling, if that's even a word. Uh, but the answer is, in one word, no, we are not in a real estate bubble. Now, the, the question is pertinent and understandable considering the disaster that was 2007 and 2008 and the major hit that homeowners took. So I empathize with those who are hesitant to make a move right now, being, being fearful we're in another bubble. But let me share some data with you to ease your mind a little bit. First off, what actually caused the last crash in 2007 and 2008? First of all, it was low down payments, extremely low down payments. Second, it was flexible mortgage rates. You had a lot of arms, which are adjustable rate mortgages. You had a lot of uh, people who would just apply for a loan and without even having uh, requisite work experience would get a loan anyways. Uh, and then number three, we had a significant oversupply uh, of homes. So in the last housing crash, lenders essentially were loaning money to anyone no matter their qualifications. And as I mentioned, I actually had a friend of mine who got a loan for $600,000 in 2007 when he was in between jobs, in between jobs, and he got a loan for $600,000. No wonder the market fell apart. Plus, lenders were, were heavily pushing those arms, as I mentioned, which have low interest rates to start, but then they start climbing after a few years, pushing people into payments that they couldn't afford. On top of that, builders were way over building. To give context, uh, in July 2007, there were 4 million homes available for sale. As of April 2021, 1.16 million, all around a bad scenario in 2007, 2008. So again, in July 20, 2007, 4 million homes available for sale. April 2021, 1.16 million. That is a significant difference. So we learned a little bit. Changes have been made. So if the cause of the last crash was related to down payments, mortgage rates, and oversupply, let's take a look about where. Uh, uh, let's take a look at where we are right now. So first of all, down payments are way up, way up. More money down means more equity already in the home. In 2007, the typical down payment was just nine percent, and forty. 5% of first-time home buyers financed 100% of their home. So almost half of the first-time home buyers financed all of their home and put no money down. Whereas in 2021, the typical down payment was not 9%, it was now 15.9%. And only 17% of first-time home buyers in 2020 fully financed their home, down from 45% of homeowners financing 100% of their home down to 17%. So significant, significant change in how many buyers were putting money down as a down payment. More equity ultimately means more market security. Second, one of the biggest issues we saw was uh, fixed rate mortgages, uh, or excuse me, one of the one of the uh, benefits that we saw and one of the changes, we started to see more fixed rate mortgages away from the adjustable rate mortgage. In the crash, as I mentioned, a much larger number of buyers had adjustable rate mortgages, which pushed them into an unaffordable mortgage when the interest rate went up. Today, most buyers are avoiding that risk and the monthly mortgage cost, which, can, which cannot go up, is locked in and fits within the buyer's current budget and not their estimated future budget. In fact, in 2007, 15% of buyers had an adjustable rate mortgage compared to only 4% in 2020. Now, that may seem like a relatively small percentage difference, but that equates to over 600,000 more buyers in 2007 with an arm than in 2020. Again, more fixed rate mortgages equals more market security. And finally, lending restrictions today are much, much tighter. Due to, due to lender tightening, it's much more difficult to be approved for a mortgage. And, and that's a good thing. Credit requirements are up. Proof of cash and employment is more closely watched. And all of this means a safer market as fewer buyers are purchasing a home they cannot truly afford. A good barometer for lending practices is the number of foreclosures occurring around the country. The larger the number tends to equate to the looser the lending practice. In March 2008, a whopping 234,685 people fired, filed for foreclosure, 234,000 people. In February 2020, only 48,000 people fire, filed for foreclosure. That's hard to say. So almost 200,000 fewer people in February 2020. And when you take into consideration the pandemic forbearance, that number dropped 
in, in February, that number dropped from 48,000 in February 2020 to only 11,800 in April 2021. That is a significant decrease, significant decrease, showing a significant tightening on lending practices. Tighter loan requirements also means more market security. So although the concern is real, real the fear is justified, the data paints a completely different story. We are not in a bubble. In fact, the future of the real estate market looks very strong. If you've thought about investing in the real estate market or you want to buy or sell a home, reach out to us. We'd love to help and just give you some thoughts and ideas for you to consider while you make the best decision for you and your family. We're always here to help. Thanks so much for listening today on whether or not we are in a real estate bubble.